Okay, so the next speaker is Emmanuel Reinecke, and he will talk about comparison theorems in periodic geometry. Yes, thank you. So uh, before I talk about comparison theorems in periodic geometry, I first want to talk about the statements in complex geometry uh, that motivate it and that we've also seen in some of the uh, previous talks. So if X is a complex manifold, then we can look at its uh, holomorphic Duram complex. And this complex is exact uh, <laughs> by the Poincaré lemma. So we can relate different parts of it in terms of cohomology. And this is the Duram theorem. So the cohomology of the, of the red part is isomorphic to the, uh, the cohomology of the yellow part. Uh, thinking of cohomology of uh, the manifold with uh, complex coefficients. This, this isomorphism is natural and it's kind of interesting because we have extra structures on both sides that we don't see on the other side. Here we have the Hodge filtration, some, some filtration here. Uh, this C vector space here actually comes from a Z module, the, uh, the integral singular cohomology. And uh, this isomorphism is also highly transcendental. So, so already for the uh, puncture complex plane, we need to be able to access something like Two pi i in order to define this isomorphism, and uh, so a natural question is if we can um, have similar isomorphisms over uh, different number systems. And it turns out that in uh, periodic geometry, so if we work with some finite uh, extension of Q, that there's actually a bunch of uh, such isomorphisms. I want to talk a particular one where this x is given as some zero set of polynomials inside of uh, the projective space of K. And I actually want to insist that these polynomials are defined already over uh, the ring of integers of K. Um, and that also there's some, some smoothness here. So the experts can and, and are encouraged to think of this as a a smooth buffer variety uh, with good reaction over K. Okay, and so then um, there's analogs of both of uh, these uh, two groups. So the singular cohomology gets replaced by, um, by the etal cohomology of this variety. And so the Duram cohomology, we've seen in previous talks, we can still define this here in the setting. Um, but actually, in this nice setting uh, where we have this good reduction, um, this Duran cohomology only depends on these polynomials, um, on the values of these polynomials that we get when we reduce map the maximal ideal. And so this gives us some extra structure, gives us some, some Frobenius on this Duran cohomology group. And uh, this is packaged by something called crystalline cohomology, but really I wanted to think of this as Duran cohomology um, together with some extra structure. In this and so the theorem of Hultings tells us that um, these two groups are still isomorphic once we tensor up with some other ring. <laughs> so this ring should contain something like 2 pi i that we already needed over here uh, to define this isomorphism. And well, this was already conjectured by, by Grotendieck and Fontaine and has since been reproven many, many times. So there should be a lot more uh, dots here. Um, and one very nice thing about this theorem is that there's again a lot of extra structures on both sides. So here we have this, uh, this Hodge filtration. We have the Frobenius. On this side, we have an action of the Galois group of K bar over K. And one can actually also put, um, one can put similar structures on this ring decrypts. And then it turns out that this isomorphism preserves all this structure. Action of the Galois group and the Frobenius. 
And so this allows us to recover the red part from the yellow part and vice versa, which was not possible over here. So here, we, I couldn't see the filtration on the yellow side. We couldn't see um, the integral structure here on the, on the right-hand side. Okay, so in some sense, that's the end of the story, but my talk is only uh, five minutes over, so I'll say a little bit more. Um, and as geometers, we also sometimes um, are curious about the relative set. So what happens when we uh, have a family of varieties or a family of complex manifolds? And I actually want to start again by talking about uh, what happens over C. So now I want to look at a family of complex manifolds, which is, is smooth and proper. So proper is just some uh, compactness assumption. It means that uh, the pre images of compact sets are compact. And we can try to understand what is the Durham cohomology of the fibers of this family. And there's a very nice way to package it. <clears throat> and in terms of a certain vector bundle uh, for this complex manifold S. Okay, now that we've seen the Durand theorem, it's natural to wonder, can we still recover the singular cohomology of the fibers from this Durand cohomology? And in fact, the answer is yes. And uh, for this one is to look at a connection called the Gauss-Mani connection. So this is a map, a C-linear map from this vector bundle to the vector bundle Answered, you know, differential forms. And we should think of this as some sort of set of uh, partial differential equations. And it turns out that the relative atomic homology is exactly the set of, of those uh, sections of the vector bundle that satisfies these uh, partial differential equations, so the flat sections. Uh, Okay, so this is great. We can get, um, oh, sorry, not the top thing here. <laughs> so this is great. We can get the, uh, the singular cohomology back from the Durand cohomology, like even if we um, have such a family. But if you really buy into the Durand theorem, then you also want to go the other way. Like if I give you the relative singular cohomology, what would you want to be able to reconstruct this Durand cohomology? Maybe at first it doesn't seem like this should work, but the Riemann Hilbert correspondence tells us that it does. So it tells us in the setting that if you start with a, a vector bundle moments um, with a flat connection. So then again, you can look at the uh, flat sections of the vector bundle, but in fact, you can also go back. Just you take the flat sections and you multiply them with all other holomorphic functions on X. So that's the connection. You just take the connection coming from the, from the differential on the holomorphic functions. And you should do this just with exactly the vector bundle that you started with. So this is some sort of correspondence between these vector bundles with flat connections and certain uh, C local systems. And so actually this Riemann Hilbert correspondence is it gives us a way to uh, phrase this Durham theorem in a much nicer way and also for the Durham cohomology more generally of these vector bundles with flat connection. So if I'm now again in the setup where I have a smooth proper family of complex manifolds, then there's a way to go uh, from a vector bundle with connection X to a vector bundle with connection on um, the base S. Uh, 
um, so this E was just um, the structure sheet, then this would be the relative uh, drum cohomology. There's also a way for these local systems. So if we, again, in this case of the structure sheet, then this would just be the complex numbers. And then one can, again, look at the, um, the relative singular cohomology in fibers. So let me give these names. So it's E to go to some. All right, so I start E and this local system color. So you can also take the relative cohomology. And so now there's a natural question. If I start over here and go down here, there's two ways to go. I could start with my vector bundle, take the flat sections, and then take relative singular cohomology. But I could also uh, first take this relative Duran cohomology and then pass to flat sections. And this is actually, it gives me the same answer. And the special case for S is a point, this is exactly what you want to hear. So this is compatible with diagrams. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our setting of p-adic geometry. So again, I want to work over um, some uh, finite extension of QP. And now I want to think of the p-adic analog of these smooth proper uh, family of complex manifolds. So I want to be uh, thinking about something like the p-adic uh, unit disk. And the problem is it can't really be described by a series of sets of polynomials anymore. It's rather, it's, some, it's described by some inequality of uh, certain uh, conversion powers. Okay, and um, so we also still insist that uh, we want these conversion power series to be uh, to have coefficients in, um, in this ring of integers OK instead of just K. So the technical way to phrase this is we start with some uh, smooth proper morphism. Of uh, smooth formal schemes. Okay. And so it turns out that there's again two categories that somehow correspond to this red side over here and the yellow side over here. So I told you before that uh, for the yellow side, you should think of this in terms of etal cohomology. And so this correspondence is a bit worse. We don't get all local systems, but we get a certain class, which are called uh, crystalline local systems. So here on the left-hand side, on the red side, we had this Durham cohomology with this extra functoriality, which I called crystalline cohomology. It had this Frobenius. It also had this Hodge filtration. And so the natural uh, counterpart of these vector bundles with flat connection is called a filtered F isocrystal. Uh, here, what are the two subscripts in these x's? Ah, so uh, this is supposed to be the special fiber. Uh, so again, I'm taking these um, these power series that define my formal scheme, and I reduce them mod the maximal ideal. And here, I mean the generic fiber. So I think of these as being uh, power series over k, and not just throwing up integers. Okay, and so one theorem. That I uh, proved recently in joint work with Howard Yang Kuo, and it's based on a lot of uh, previous work, is that again we have something similar to what happens over here. So if I start with a, a crystalline local system, X, uh, which has a certain associated filtered F isocrystal in here, then one can take uh, one can take again these direct images, and it turns out they're again associated with each other. So. Uh, I have higher direct image of L is again crystalline. <laughs> and 
of this fi superstore. Again, when when s is a point, this recovers um, this sort of comparison here. Uh, yeah, I should also point out there was a lot of previous work when this map actually came from a map of uh, smooth uh, proper schemes. This was already in this work of Faltings. There's also work when um, K is an unramified extension due to Tan and Chong and many more works. So there should also be a lot of dots here. Um, what was also new for us is uh, that we prove it in a somewhat different way than these people. So we look at a third player over here. We um, so recently chose a definition of a, a prismatic side of these X um, due to Bart and Schultz, that was also mentioned in previous talks. And Bart Schultz already, they uh, considered again crystals with uh, probanian structures for this prismatic side. And they explained to us how once we start here, we can get a local system out of it and how we can get an isocrystal out of it. And uh, so in the case when X is a point, this is already an interesting case because there's a non-trivial Agaba action. They explained how there is a correspondence between these two sides. And what we really did is we tried to generalize this correspondence to higher dimensions. Okay, I'm out of time, so let me uh, Any question? Can you, did, does your is your um your research to the crystal case, or uh, can you also handle the semi-stable case? So we only wrote down things in the crystalline case. I think in general, like a lot of the technology has already been developed for the semi-stable case. For example, log prismatic homology. So it seems doable to also do it in the semi-stable case, but. The paper is already very long, so I'd like this was enough. <laughs> yeah. So your correspondence goes only in one way. Uh, the correspondence goes uh, by this part over here. So we yeah, this is this is an, an equivalent, right? So uh, this is an okay. So you have to put some some attributes here, and then this becomes an equivalent of categories. The other one. This one, I think, it can be an equivalence of categories. So, for example, it can at most see the isogeny. Well, so these are things that, that are defined over Q. So you could at most see the isogeny category, and then I think what can show this is at least uh, fully faithful. Okay, so I think cooking time. Huh?